Hello there, one. So Vampire here. Well, as you can see, because of my accident with the wand last week, my chair happened to switch places, and I can't seem to budget from here, so it's going to be stuck like this for a long time. Let's if I can think of how to get it unscrewed here. But anyway, welcome to another movie review. my review of Fern Gully, I said that I might review the Lorax someday. Well, considering that today is Earth Day and Arbor Day is coming up in a few days, I figured that it's a perfect time to review the movie that I brought up last year. So without further ado, here's my movie review of Dr. Seuss's The Lorax. The movie is based on the book by Theodore Geisel, aka Dr. Seuss. And it's quite a surprise when two of the characters are named after the author and his widow at the time of the book's release. It's a fun fact I like to bring up. A boy named Ted lives in a place called Thneedville, where everything is made of plastic and air is bought. And he wants to impress a girl named Audrey by getting her a truffula tree, which are not around. So he visits the Wunzler, who tells the story of how the trees were gone and how a creature called the Lorax tried to stop him. And in the meantime, Ted's trying to avoid the mayor of Needville, named Aloysius O'Hare, who's trying to stop Ted from getting a tree. So what do you think of this movie? Well, I find it to be an okay film. It's not good, it's not bad, it's okay. And the problems I have with it are quite a few. One is the pacing. It feels too rushed and doesn't keep a good enough balance when going over the moments from the book or any of the added material. Another is the songs. Not that they're bad, they're quite enjoyable. But aside from the almost forgettable lyrics, I feel like that these songs are not needed and the film still works without them. Yeah, they help keep the film going, but mixed in with the pace of the film, they don't fit well with the film in terms of letting it all sink in. For example, the How Bad Can I Be song, where the one slur is shown making a big yet destructive progress with his invention, is a really enjoyable one. And it builds and builds to a huge ending, that by the time it's over, there doesn't seem to be enough time to get into the moment where the last tree falls, because the song ended on a very big note. So yes, the songs are good for what they are, but they're not necessary. But there are some good omens in it too. Like the animation. It's all bright and colorful, fun to look at, and can become dark and beautiful when needed. As well as the designs for the film. And yeah, all the Seuss adaptations take advantage of the designs since many people know Seuss for his artwork, rhymes, and characters. But some of the designs tend to take a modern approach with the Seussian look. And it strangely works for how it's shown. And the actors? They did a fair job voicing the characters. Danny DeVito voices the Lorax. Ed Helms voices the Lunsler. Zac Efron voices Ted. Taylor Swift voices Audrey. Betty White voices Grammy Norma. Rod Riggle voices Aloysius O'Hare, and Chris Winold voices the forest animals. As a whole, this movie is... okay. The characters are fine, the story is okay, the songs are quite enjoyable, but aren't necessary, and the animation is fun to look at. Directors Chris Winold and Kyle Bauda did at least made an almost decent film, with bright colors, fun designs, good animation, and having DeVito as the Lorax does feel like perfect casting. But the use of the songs, the way it's all paced, and certain moments that are fillers really get in the way of me wanting to enjoy it all. And it's not as grand as Horton Hears a Who, or as fun as The Grinch, but it is one of those guilty pleasures I have, which I watch every time Earth Day or Arbor Day comes around. So today... This movie begins to rain of... Two and a half plus stars. Thank you for joining me! Like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, tune in next week for a new video, and have a happy Earth Day and Arbor Day as well.